Now that Joy can do my stitching, uh, which takes a lot of time to do, but she's been able to learn how to do it and do it very well, I'm able to do more of these reports. I'm not sure if there's a lot of interest in them, so if there isn't, um, I won't do them anymore. But uh, when you look at Reed's case, number 672, which was a general wave case, um, there were a couple of areas that were kind of interesting. Um, and when you look at the mesial root uh, and you look at both halves, uh, there was some pulp, uh, quite a bit of pulp left in one side of the root. So these are the two split sections of the mesial root in Reed's cases, and these are the dehydrated sections. And so using the criteria I outlined in the prior video in choosing certain areas, these are the areas that I chose. And I'll show those initially and see what the comments are. So when you go into the MIE project site and go to Dr. Pullen's folder, you'll see 672. Select that and then go into the area where the SEMs are. And in there, there'll be the selection of folders for the two distal roots and the mesial root. If you select the mesial root, and we're going to look at, these are all of the areas uh, that I've done on the mesial root. It's worthwhile spending some time and going through some of those. But for the purposes of this video, let's look at just several of the areas. This is area 24. And when you go into 24, I'll show you the area that we're uh, the area of interest here is area 24. And I hope from the last video you understand wh why and how I've chosen these areas. Here's where the sectioning disc went. And so there's no debris uh, in the canal from the sectioning disc. And we're going to be looking at this area, a stitched area, and probably also area 23 where uh, we're on the border of where the remaining pulp was as well. Uh, and then perhaps we'll look at area 21 uh, as well. So to get to those areas, I have them by stitched area. We'll look at the 100x stitched, the 500x stitched, and the 1500x stitched. If you double click on the 100x stitched and go to the stitched sections, there you have the stitch sections and you can use the zoom control and first of all, get an overview of what the section looks like, what we're going to be looking at higher power. And you get a sense for what's actually left in the canal. And we feel this is, none of this is from the sectioning debris. This is what the canal looked like uh, after the gentle wave treatment. And then using the left mouse button, you can go into the stitched area and you can zoom in on it. And you get a pretty good sense of uh, what the general wave, uh, general wave device is doing. There's quite a, a bit of pre-dentin still present with m these round things are not bacteria. They're, you should know by now, these are the uh, undemineralized calcose or partially demineralized calcospherites. We're gonna be looking at these in, in higher power. And uh, there is some red, there are some red blood cells here, some of the fibrous tissue of some remaining pulp. And you get up and then you have some uh, open dentinal tubules where the pre-dentin has been uh, de uh, demineralized. So what's interesting in these cases is there's quite a distribution of effect of the device. In some areas, the dentin is very clear. In other areas, there's quite a bit of uh, pre-dentin. Here's, here's the remnant of the pulp that uh, was, was still present. And then if you go back, we'll look at the 500X stitched. And if you go to the uh, selection that's called stitched, you go directly into that. And I have just to 
keep you appraised of the area of interest is area 24. And then I have selected here uh, where the 500 stitched area will be just to, so you can maintain your, your bearings. And then you can come in and a little higher power, you really get a sense uh, of the remaining demineralizing predentin, uh, a great deal of uh, red blood cells. Uh, occasionally you'll see an echinocyte uh, developing, uh, although they're fairly infrequent. There's there's an econocyte. What I'm taking to be is an econocyte. And I'm even wondering if some of these things that appear as a red blood cell are, are really part of the odontoblastic process uh, that looks like a red blood cell, but is actually part of the process. If you like look at this, I believe this is part of the odontoblastic process that hasn't been removed. These are the calcospherites uh, of the predentin. And you get a pretty good sense uh, of how demineralized the predentin is. Of course, we don't know uh, the status of the predentin prior to the general wave procedure, so we don't know if it's in the process of being mineralized naturally or whether it's in the process of being demineralized by, by the device. Here you see some things that look like beginning econocytes. So then you, we come back and we look at the 1500X stitched, go to the stitched. And here you have the reference. So you are reminded where you are. And here at the higher power, um, this is why I think some of these are the odontoblastic process. We don't really know the effect of the device on the odontoblastic process cell process. This looks like the head of the odontoblastic process. This is demineralizing predentin, partially demineralizing. So it's worth your while to go through some of these and see, refine your pattern recognition. These are the calcospherites. Again, I see uh, no evidence of any bacterial morphotypes at all here. Um, at the 1500X, uh, we would certainly, if there were microorganisms present in this area, we would certainly be able to detect them. Again, what looks like the odontoblastic process to me, and not simply something that has the same appearance as a red blood cell. This looks, and we've seen this before uh, with the gentle wave that it can leave the odontoblastic process intact. So it's 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 kind of interesting. So that's area twenty four. Uh, Next, we'll look uh, at area 23. Okay, when we look at the uh, area 23, when you go to the site and uh, bring up the ADX stitched, mm -hmm. So we're in area 23, just to the left of the remaining uh, pulp stump that's still present. So this is the area we're going to stitch together to see uh, what the dental wall really looks like. And you get a sense for um, what the general wave device does here. Uh, looks like there's some open dentinal tubules and quite a bit of predentin. dentin 
and smear layer or pulp uh, still still present. When you go into the 500s stitched area, you get a little better sense. This is this is the area that we're going to stitch at 500x. And you can see the demineralizing uh, calcospherites. Still quite a bit of uh, red blood cells present. And a, de a partially demineralized mineralization front. You can see this mineralization front is in the process of being demineralized. And in other parts, it's completely demineralized and the dentinal tubules are wide open and the peritubular dentin is gone. And this is a part of the pulp stump that was still still present. And then to go to the 1500 stitched. And I've outlined the area where the stitching is right here. So we're going to stitch this area. And here you'll see, uh, you know, the pre-dentin and the process of being demineralized. Again, no evidence of any bacterial morphotypes here. And here you can see the, the uh, what looks like red blood cells in the process of being deformed uh, by the gentle wave device and kind of becoming econocyte-like in, in appearance. And here's an econocyte right here. These are red blood cells and being deformed by either the irrigation material or the gentle wave itself. So it's kind of interesting. More econocytes. So those are the two areas. I'll uh, make another video with uh, other showing other areas uh, as well if there's interest.